Hello. Let me know you can hear me when I'm on. Hello, his sound all working. I'm trying to be the first Larkin on YouTube to try and not have any technical issues. Because Joe's last week was fucking priceless. Fingers crossed. Just let me know if any sound issues are happening and we'll sort it. Can everyone hear that on guitar? What? Sound is working perfectly, that is what I like to hear. All right, so people might have seen my Insta guitar lesson a couple of weeks ago now. Um, well, we went through a couple of bits and bobs, but the sound's a lot better on this, so you might be able to hear what I'm doing and see me a little bit better. I thought I'd try and show you. I saw there was a couple of um, comments on the Insta lesson about um, acoustic versions and stuff like that. We've done quite a few on our time, um, and we'd had we did a acoustic show at a church in Manchester last like just before Christmas which is unreal so shout out if you were there and we did an acoustic version of uh, Not Enough Love which was cool I played piano for this one but it sounded great Josh played it on acoustic and with some kind of open chords and it was cool so I thought we'd just go through it and then I can show you the riff again a bit more close up and we can go through that and hopefully you can play that at home I'll show you the easy way of doing the open chords as well at the end if you're not if you've not been playing guitar that long, that's all right. But yeah, so it's pretty much just it's in G. Okay, but we're going to play some open chords today, which are literally just all you need is two fingers. So even if you've not been playing that long, you'd be able to play this dead easy. Um, you basically put in your first finger on third fret on the bottom E string, and then you're gonna get your pinky finger or your third finger, whichever you find easiest, and you're gonna put that on the G string on the fourth fret, okay? And you're just gonna play open D string. So you're always gonna have that open D string. So it's gonna sound something like that. Okay, so that's the first chord you need. And then second chord, you're gonna slide right up to the 10th fret. Exactly the same shape. Yeah, Josh did. Josh played this the other day. So this is exactly how he played it, which was cool. So you're going to play that on the D, and then you're going to go down to the exactly the same shape on the fifth fret. Okay, you can do that little slide if you need. So you got that for the verse, so. So that's it. A lot of the song is just that, really. We go back in time. Dead easy. And then, so for the last bit of sort of every phrase, we've got a slight variation. So you've got. to here which is the F sharp so instead of the normal shape which is like that you're moving down to F sharp and the normal shape would be that but you're gonna tuck that pinky in a little bit so it's on exactly the same fret so both fingers on the second fret then up to the G and up to the A 
okay, and then you go back to that again. So wash over me, sentimentality. There it is. Put that slide in. And then down to the F sharp again for the last bit. Okay, then you got the chorus, it's saying, Cause there's not enough love for the both of us, for both of us. But you can sort of like, you can do anything you want with it, you can make it sound like different on each section. So you could have the first verse, very simple, just like we've been doing. And then for the um, chorus, you can go into picking. That's underneath the riff as well after the chorus. So you So then you've just got the breakdown, which is slightly different for the we go back in time bit. So you're starting on the G, like you would normally. You go into the A. And then you go in just on two frets of the B. So you go back in time. on those chorus chords over the riff, so riff-wise. <laughs> this is, I'll add, is just a semitone up from the recording, so you can play it in that open, the open chords which I think sound really good, especially if you're on acoustic, which I imagine a lot of you are. Like It's really nice to play and dead easy if you have a little practice of it. So riff-wise, just over that chorus, we're doing a few slides. If you've not been playing for ages, you might not be able to play it, and that's no problem. You know, you can, but you, you might need to practice for a while, whatever, whatever you can do to sort of play it, or just make it into your own, simplify it a little bit. That sounds cool. So riff wise, there's quite a lot of sliding in it. So you're going 10 to 12 and back down. So you do. And then you're doing a hammer on there. So you got two slides, so on the B string. And then you've got another slide. Hammer on. And then. So that bit is. So you've got a hammer on and a slide with one pluck. So you're just going. And then. So with that you got. practice that jump even at the beginning I remember when we recorded it it was really hard like I couldn't I couldn't play it in like I had the phrase in my head but we, it took so long to actually get it right I remember the guy who we were sort of producing it with Luke he's a really good guitarist as well and we were both just <laughs> going back and forth trying to both play it because it's just rapid and it was a nightmare at first <laughs> So that's over those chords. Dead easy. Show us 
TV Dream on your car. Yeah, we could have a look at TV Dream if you want. Is the sound all all right at the minute? can have a look at that it's quite it's a bit harder so actually before we do that I'll just show you the the easy version of not enough love so if you've not been playing that long let me just tune in you can do this version dead easy it's just open chords really simple chords to be fair and it'll sound pretty good so if you wanted to play and sing at home on an acoustic and you're struggling with those open chords up and down the fret. Try that. So you've got where you play that. You're just going to be playing the open version, so you've got G. It sounds quite nice if you keep this E open as well. Starting with the J. We go back in time to a place we used to love. To a place we once loved. Dead easy. And you can do different stuff with that as well. You can just pick it. Just before the first chorus, I showed you before where you go to the F sharp, G, A. You just have to substitute that for if you've learnt bar chords. You go to F sharp minor, G, back to G open, A. So if you Google the chord charts of F sharp minor, it's really easy. Dead easy. So you should all be able to play that at home. And if not, I think you've got plenty of time in isolation to learn it and watch this video back. Uh, TV Dream is a bit more difficult. I can show you like the riffs and stuff to that. A lot of that's played on synth. And this riff is played, like that main riff is played like with cross between a guitar and a synth. with that there's that little synthy bit at the beginning and it comes in with a G major so bar chords again so on the fourth fret you're playing your E shaped bar chords so again if you go on like go on Google type in bar chord chord charts and you can kind of get that quite easily so you've got your G sharp major. Then you've got B flat minor, where you're just taking off the middle finger to make the minor. And when you're starting, if you put that second finger over, it kind of helps you get the power down a little bit more. Then F sharp major.
Bah, il y a un... So a lot of that's playing on synth, but it's dead easy to sort of transition over at home. So you've got the riff. Starting that on the ninth fret. Then eighth on the G string. And tenth on the G string. a bit harder you kind of can sort of dampen it on that bit and get it quite percussive almost just might take a little bit of practicing to do it once you get it though you'll sort of be in the zone this one's still a bit of a nightmare to play live for me. It's uh, just because there's a lot of effects changes in it throughout. And if it sounds, if there's one sound that doesn't sound quite right, if it's not mixed right into the live setup, it can just be dreadful. And I can stick out like a sore thumb. Like the really high bit when it comes to... So you've got quite a really high pitched sound coming out. It's a bit of a nightmare if it sounds bad. <laughs> Barely have a clue what he's on about, but sounds great. Appreciate that, LZ. Thank you. If anyone has any questions about just general guitar vibes, then just hit me up. I'm your man. Yeah, so that riff, so if you have if you have pedals at home and you've invested in like a bit of a board, even if it's pretty simple and you've just got like gain pedals or just a distortion and a reverb, you can kind of make, you can kind of make like some cool sounds anyway with just a dead simple setup. You just got to experiment. Uh, what do you use for them sounds, pedal-wise? For that particular sound, we've got um, a big muff, like a Russian big muff. They brought out Electro Harmonics, brought out like a, a Russian version, which is dark green, which is cool as, um, into a Digitech Whammy, which is like a pitch pedal. So it'll that takes it up an octave. And then I've got that going into a Strymon Iridium amp replicator, basically. Um... And then that's pretty much it. We've got, I've got a timeline um, delay pedal, just giving it a little bit of a slap back. In. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that that riff you've got. Let me just get a clean sound so it's easier to follow for you. very like staccato and as I say again like this is completely clean so it's easy for you to follow but if you have pedals at home have a play around with it see if you can make it sound better than me so there you're starting you need you need to use your pinkies fingers for this song really because you're covering quite a few frets so you're starting on the 11th for on the D string with your pinky and then you're going down to the eighth, so so eleventh, eighth, tenth, back to eleventh. Then this bit is a bit quicker. You're hammering on there from the eighth to eleventh. Shake if you can. Then you're going right up to the top E string there. 
on the eighth string and you're doing a hammer on. So you've got there. And in between, if you can put like a little skip in it, it sort of helps it to. It's quite a weirdly phrased riff, so if you you put little uh, ghost notes in there, it'll sort of help it flow a little bit better. So. Okay. Can you play Wonderwall? No. We actually did a show at a club in Manchester 42s and we played Wonderwall a couple of months ago now. A pretty weird night, but it was good. Yeah, so for over those riffs you've got G sharp major, B flat minor, F sharp major. So, uh, verse to TV Dream, you've got E flat minor you're starting with. G sharp major. So, E flat minor is you played the bar in the E shape. You're playing the bar in the A minor shape there on the sixth fret. throughout apart from the last time it goes and then to the F sharp major then you start the chorus again so it's pretty easy to be fair um, the solo wise play for it a few times. I always found it really hard learning solos as a kid because you can't really like sing them out that well. It's always kind of a bit more improv -y. I much preferred I much preferred like learning riffs and like vocal melodies I find quite easy to play on guitar but learning solos I had a nightmare. I had an absolute nightmare with it. Like following tabs or anything. I just couldn't learn someone else's solo. So it's always important I think to like improv your own if you can't do it learn your scales and you can kind of do it um, some qu any questions going on what's your process for writing lead slash solo guitar i think you've got to always complement the um if there's already a top line vocal over it you can like especially with that one especially just kind of complements the chorus vocal melody quite a lot it doesn't get in the way of anything and it's kind of catchy enough to start the song with so i think you've got to sort of complement everything around you and it's so easy for you know a guitarist to just stick some distortion on and just shred over the top of everything and it's like never actually sounds good so i think it's just you know complementing everyone around you complementing the bass and the drums and i think like you've just got to you've got to go with everything like if the drummer's playing a certain hi-hat pattern play along to that if you can and try and link everything together so that's the main thing 
this one, this particular little bit though, is um, over that drop down bit, sort of towards the end of TV Dream. And um, you're starting on that E string, and you're gonna work your way all the way down at, at some point. It's quite very steppy, so you're going right down to exactly where you think you should be going. Did Guitar Hero help you with the learning process? Yeah. I'm rubbish at guitar hero though. So with it, you've got when I'm playing using that whammy to go up and down so it makes it sound even more like you're using that much of the fretboard when actually you're only using four frets so which i use quite a lot to be honest because i'm too lazy to actually move my hand down the guitar or up the guitar <laughs> and it sounds pretty cool as well um let's see questions can you post piano chords uh music for any of the songs yeah we can we can post chords for all these to be fair i'll i think i said i'd do it on the last Instagram live stream to be honest I didn't so but yeah I can do that for sure we'll get that on there so anyway so that's not enough love and TV dream pretty simple I think this will go up straight to YouTube so you can go over it and I want to see some videos I only saw a couple last week so get some videos up if you're playing it and having a sing song I will love you and leave you happy Easter and I'll see you soon peace out